12 years since its inception, and the London Design Festival seems to have come of age. I'm here at the BMW launch party for the festival at the Victoria and Albert Museum in central London. There's a real buzz here as established and up-and-coming designers mixed with business people and opinion formers from around the world. The London Design Festival will see over 300 events taking place across the city, but the BNA is the official nerve centre. This year it features a number of tantalising installations, including the Pond Hovering Crest by Zaha Hadid, and in the museum's hallowed Raphael Hall there's the awe-inspiring kinetic sculpture called Double Space by Edward Barber and Jay Oscarby. When the London Design Festival started 12 years ago, what we saw were a lot of independent designers using that moment to showcase a prototype, for example, as a way of attracting new manufacturers to their products. What I've certainly noticed in that period is that designers are doing that less. They're less reliant on the big manufacturers taking them through to production and actually through the technologies that they, that they have at their disposal now, such as rapid prototyping, where they can take a product and an idea through from concept to fruition very quickly and then sell it on through communication avenues straight into the hands of the consumer, designers feel a bit braver in my opinion. They, they, they're taking more chances, they become more entrepreneurial. The festival has also witnessed the emergence of six dedicated design districts around the capital where visitors can find a concentration of expertise, installations and retail outlets. One of the more established of these is in Shoreditch, in the east of the city, where pop-up shops proliferate and exhibitions explore where craft meets design. Tapping into the renewed appreciation of craft and process is a Saturday market project, where visitors can see production processes firsthand. Partly as a reaction against the culture of the mass manufacturer and the disconnect it brings between the product and the designer, there's now a greater desire to be more closely involved in the making of objects and a renewed interest in provenance. Collaboration is also on show throughout the festival, like the partnership between Design House Vitra and its recent acquisition Artec at the Swiss furniture maker's showroom in the Clerkenwell Design District. Indeed, collaboration is a bit of a buzzword in the design world at the moment, and something that Sir Terence Conran key driver of the professionalisation of design in Britain, has sought to experiment with in his Wishlist project. He invited 10 eminent designers to nominate an emerging talent they could work with, the brief, to make from hardwood something they'd always wanted but never been able to find. The results range from a kitchen stool by Felix de Pass for architect Alison Brooks, to a sculpted water carrier by Gareth Neal for Zaha Hadid. They learn a lot from their mentor in discussion and um, discussion of detailed design. They le learn even more from working with experienced craftspeople in a commercial workshop. The design festival is so successful and the collaboration with manufacturers I think it's because, at long last, manufacturers have realised that design is one of the most important components of a successful product. The festival's landmark project this year is an installation in Trafalgar Square, initiated by Airbnb, the peer-to-peer -peer accommodation website. A place called home sees four designers explore what it is that makes a home. Each house touches on the designer's individual approach, as well as some prominent themes that reverberate across the festival. The use of refraction, movable interiors, and in the case of Ilsa Crawford, advances in technology. It was clear that if we wanted to show life, we wanted to show the fluid thing, a film was the only answer. And also, of course, Airbnb is an exact illustration of that. The opening of doors, the possibility to make connections with people the other side of the world is a consequence of smart technology. We're more human, the more technological we are. Our paternity philosophy is to use pattern as a tool to encourage people to think more deeply about the world around them and feel more connected by noticing really simple things like the patterns that shape 
everyday life. So we've made um, a giant installation that's a homage to all these circles, lines, triangles and squares that make up the world around us. Attendants of this year's festival have pointed to the extraordinary diversity of what's on offer. From the high-end furniture and antiques at Decorex in West London to these more modern installations here in Trafalgar Square. This year has seen more than ever the impact of collaborations in bringing designers together, while social media and workshops have helped make the language of craft more accessible to the general public. Serena Tarling, Financial Times, London.